Let's start with FOMO, fear of missing out, and in particular, a defense of FOMO. Yes, that's right. You heard me correctly. A defense of fear of missing out. Suffice to say, NVIDIA still has a lot of room for growth in the coming years because of all of these different trends that are intersecting and propelling the generative AI movement forward. Hey everyone, welcome back to Chipstock Investor. This week as NVIDIA's GPU technology conference continues on, we're providing some more coverage as promised on companies other than NVIDIA that have a lot to gain from NVIDIA. We had a video on Snowflake earlier this week and today we're gonna be discussing Oracle, we're gonna be discussing FOMO, and we're gonna be discussing sovereign AI. So lots of things, lots of topics. We promise they're all interweaved together and NVIDIA plays a very large part in all of these things. So let's take a look. Yeah, let's take a look indeed. And Casey, let's start with FOMO, fear of missing out, and in particular, a defense of FOMO. Yes, that's right. You heard me correctly, a defense of fear of missing out. And the reason why we want to make a defense of this is we think there continues to be some really bad bear market mindsets that need some moderating. So just like in 2020 and 2021, a lot of new investors learned some bad habits, some FOMO. I thought you just blindly buy stocks without considering valuation whatsoever. Now that has swung to avoiding FOMO entirely, valuation, a hyper focus on evaluation and paying a cheap price, quote unquote, cheap price. And so let's talk about our radically moderate mindset, which we think is investors need to learn. You don't want to be on either side of these pendulum swings in market sentiment. So back in 2022 is when I originally wrote this putting together some reasons why FOMO is so destructive and how to adopt a, ma a mindset to avoid it. But I fast forward to today, a lot of investors have actually missed out on this AI hype. At least it was being called hype and it's becoming more and more clear that it's not actually hype. There is more than just a few merits to this new AI infrastructure that's being installed. Again, just to reemphasize here, we're not saying in our defense of FOMO, throw all caution to the wind. But we all need to moderate our habits when it comes to approaching investments. Yes. In fact, fear of missing out actually plays a really important role. You can't simply ignore the fact that we are these social creatures by nature and just be a miserable contrarian all the time. Now, contrarianism is very valuable and it's an essential skill to successful investing, but it's not the ultimate skill. Here at Chipstock Investor, we really value patience as one of the most important skills you can have as an investor. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Because not participating in this FOMO, fear of missing out for a business can be absolutely disastrous. Now, before we explain, here's a real world example that recently happened. We were recently with a friend who was stopped by two tourists armed with a paper map and an old publication containing top 10 things to do, top 10 points of interest. And the map was out of date. The point of interest list was out of date. In fact, this particular spot they were looking for didn't even exist. And so in this case, it's an extreme one. But in this instance, being a contrarian against a trend probably decreased these folks' vacation experience. And an argument could be made that wandering around in a new city on vacation might be a good experience where you can make new discoveries of your own. But in business, and especially in tech, that can be a very disastrous mindset. Not keeping up with trends can lead to non-competitive products that not even lower pricing can offset, which of course could be disastrous to profit margins. Absolutely. Destroys profit margins. If not just outright, you just don't get a sale at all. And so, you know, no sale, no profit margin. Okay. So this brings us to our discussion of Oracle and through the lens of NVIDIA. So in October, 2022, right around the same time we started this channel, wrote about Oracle stock. 
as far as I can find in our little enterprise search query, the first time I ever wrote about Oracle in October, 2022, because Oracle actually in many ways helped get this whole AI training, AI data center, uh, FOMO party started in the first place. You see at the time, back in 2022, Oracle was still in the early stages of building out its cloud computing infrastructure service. That's where a customer rents out data center compute and they access that via an internet connection, classic cloud. But what they did was they're playing catch up, obviously, against Amazon AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud. And so what they did is they went out and they struck a first of its kind deal with NVIDIA for a bunch of NVIDIA's AI and accelerated computing hardware. Now, it was over a year ago now that we said NVIDIA tech has absolutely leveled the playing field. And that is absolutely what has happened. Oracle's infrastructure as a service, renting that, that compute in the cloud armed with NVIDIA tech has supercharged the infrastructure as a service, IAS for Oracle, and they are rapidly catching up to the, the annualized revenue of the top three cloud providers. Oracle stock since that time has been no NVIDIA, but not bad for a big old lumbering enterprise software entity that, you know, as far as we're concerned, when we have people comment to us about Oracle software, it's almost exclusively to complain. Software developer talks about Oracle, they're usually grumbling about it not being very good, not very usable, some other service being better, but yet here we are. Stock still serving investors pretty darn well over the last few years, thanks to that NVIDIA partnership. Overall, you can see that Oracle is not an explosive company. However, it has been putting up some of the best growth rates it has in years, thanks to that NVIDIA partnership. And the last quarter was just another case in point. Revenue only increased 7%, but earnings per share jumped 16% year over year. Oracle's cloud infrastructure segment is responsible for much of the expansion, which has increased at a growth rate of nearly 50% year over year. This is the breakdown that was given at the Q3 fiscal year 2024 earnings release. You can see the infrastructure as a service makes up just over 35% of the cloud revenue, up 49% year over year, as mentioned. Software as a service, 64.7% of that cloud revenue, totaling $5.1 billion in this last quarter. Now, Casey, I want to ask you a question here because... You actually have some experience with Oracle software or what's now today Oracle software. Part of the company's software as a service segment here, which is the bigger of the two segments, but the slower moving part of this revenue breakdown, part of that is Cerner, the big healthcare software provider. You used to be a Cerner software user. So let me ask you, not a software de developer, but are you or were you a fan of Oracle software, Cerner. I don't think any medical professional is a fan of any of the software they've ever used, to be completely honest. But it, Cerner was fine. And this was obviously a mega app acquisition for Oracle and a huge source of growth in the software as a service sector. It sounds like they're going to start rolling out a lot of changes with Cerner, moving from on-premises to the cloud. They have some new software and development that they're going to start in the ambulatory setting for physicians to use AI-based, AI-generated software that helps with voice-to-text transcription, prescriptions, sending over new referrals to other specialists. So they're trying to integrate this into their current business and trying to improve upon what was already a very large existing business in Cerner. Yeah, it's super interesting. And just to maybe rewind here a little bit, you showed this slide just moments ago. Of course, overall, even with that fast-growing infrastructure as a service, business rapidly catching up to the software as a service segment at Oracle. The real story here is not the overall revenue growth, just 7% in the last quarter, but it's those profit margins. Earnings per share actually jumped 16% year over year in that last quarter. Maybe this is where we should plug our old video from last year about the so-called infinitely scalable business model, because this is really what we're talking about when 
We talk about software being infinitely scalable. Again, old, mature software business like Oracle still cranking out a double digit earnings growth decades, 40 years plus since their founding. That's why these companies fetch such high earnings multiples and will continue to fetch high earnings multiples for many years to come, even as their growth decelerates. When you're talking about these kinds of profit margins and the consistency in growing earnings for shareholders, it's just a really, really good business model for investors, for shareholders. Okay, now let's pivot a bit here because we promised in the title of this video that this was also about sovereign AI and quantum computing, which NVIDIA and Oracle have been teaming up on for a while. This is not new, but it's kind of re-emerging as a hot topic here in light of GTC this week, NVIDIA's big conference. But Casey, you pulled this quote from Oracle's last earnings call from Chief Technology Officer Larry Ellison. What is going on with this sovereign AI? What is sovereign AI? And give us an example of what that actually looks like. Yeah, just like a company may want to aggregate all of the data that they've ever produced, a country may want to do the exact same thing with cultural, language, all the data that makes a country needs to be aggregated. And that's what ultimately, in very simple terms, that's what sovereign AI is. Take a look at this comment that CTO Larry Ellison made at the Q3 fiscal year 2024 earnings call about sovereign AI. He said that pretty much every government is going to want a sovereign cloud and a dedicated region for that government. He says, we see that time and time again, major companies, governments, computer suppliers reselling our alloy cloud. The demand for our cloud regions is extraordinarily high. I believe we will end up with more data centers and cloud regions than all the other hyperscalers combined. And he continues later in the call to say that no one else is competing in this market, Microsoft, Azure, AWS. This is just Oracle. And he mentions a few countries by name. One specific country he mentioned is Albania. He said that Albania is currently using AI to generate some documents that would help allow its laws to come in line with current EU laws because Albania is currently going through that process of obtaining membership to the EU. He said that it took eight years for Serbia to work out those laws and make them in alignment with EU. In Albania, using AI, they could possibly produce those documents in 18 months to two years. So huge difference and huge usage for countries all over the world in using Oracle's cloud compute platform. Yeah, indeed. Albania, an interesting little anomaly of a place in Southeast Europe, just north of Greece. Besides probably seeing it pop up in top places to travel in 2024, a lot of people in the tech community probably maybe got introduced to Albania for the first time via OpenAI, the chat GPT maker, when its chief technology officer, its CTO, Mira Murati, briefly took over as the interim CEO when Sam Altman was fired, ousted, and then brought back shortly thereafter, Mira Marathi is Albanian. It's interesting that the country, there's obviously a connection there, given that one of the most important organizations in the world right now, OpenAI, has someone at their head in their C-suite working on AI. And of course, Albania experimenting with that AI to try to accelerate its entrance into the EU. Well, side point there on sovereign AI, Let's pivot again to quantum computing. This is another area where NVIDIA and Oracle have been partnering up a lot as of late uh, on this quantum computing. Again, another emerging tech trend along with sovereign AI, where NVIDIA helping supercharge companies like Oracle and their re-emergent growth rate. So subsequent to that Oracle partnership with NVIDIA, where they crammed a, a bunch of NVIDIA's hardware into their data centers, into their infrastructure. Along with that, NVIDIA has some quantum computing software where they have this application layer that is helping with some of the computation work that makes quantum computing development possible in the first place. And a recent example of this, this uh, little startup called QMware announced that it is using NVIDIA hardware via Oracle Cloud infrastructure 
to help with some of that development work. Really interesting little side point here. QMware is still using NVIDIA A100 GPU systems. Now two generations old, now that Blackwell has been announced. Suffice to say, NVIDIA still has a lot of room for growth in the coming years because of all of these different trends that are intersecting and propelling the generative AI movement forward. At this point, we've talked about FOMO. We've talked a little bit about some announcement at NVIDIA's GTC. We've covered Oracle, quantum computing. How do all these things interrelate? I guess first thing we'll say is we're not pitching Oracle as a top stock to buy right now. So if you're watching this wondering what is up with Oracle stock, let us show you. So like mentioned earlier, not a cheap stock, even for a big old boring company like Oracle. 35x trailing 12-month earnings, but only 20x next fiscal year's expected earnings. Not expensive at all. And given that Oracle's annualized cloud revenue, including infrastructure, is now over $20 billion, and they're rapidly catching up to the big three, especially rapidly catching up with Google Cloud, if you have not put Oracle in your list of top cloud infrastructure and cloud service stocks yet, it's time to do so. Not saying that we're buying it right now, but this is one that we have been monitoring for the last year and a half, two years, and we'll continue to do so because it's important to this whole development of the AI ecosystem. Now, Nick, at the beginning of this video, we talked about what we feel is one of the most important skills that you can have as an investor, and that's patience. Why do we say that? Let's use Oracle as an example. Yes, let's continue to use Oracle as an example because it's a powerful one. Here's a long-term chart, total return chart, which includes dividends uh, of Oracle versus the S&P 500. If your timing was far less than ideal, let's say you purchased Oracle stock on January 1st, 2000, right before peak FOMO of the dot-com era and all that euphoria going on there. I say less than ideal timing, understatement, right? disastrous timing. But fast forward more than two decades, and you actually have had, by some measures, a market-beating investment in Oracle stock when you incorporate the dividends and, and, and total return for the company. Pretty wild stuff. So here's how we bring all of this full circle. When we're talking about NVIDIA and the AI infrastructure explosion and some possibly new emerging trends that can keep this thing going for if we're to believe Jensen Wong at NVIDIA is still really in the early stages with more things coming down the pike, like sovereign AI, generative AI continuing to get better at doing more things, quantum computing at some point finally becoming actually useful and moving out of research and development into widespread commercialization. The point is that FOMO works if you're in an offensive minded industry like tech and especially software inherently is. And as an investor, your timing need not be right and certainly not perfect. Now, what you need to do is buy quality businesses, make sure you're still doing the valuation and, and making a best estimate on what future expectations are and making a reasonable purchase because you can't forget the fact that as human beings, we hate losses more than we'd like winnings. So seeing something trade at a loss on your investment statements year after year is painful. Again, your timing need not be right. What you need to do is buy quality. And then the most important thing to develop as an investor is patience and discipline to forget that you bought that thing and just sit on your buy for decades. Yeah, seriously, decades. We've been made fun of touting this before and will no doubt get made fun of and criticized again for this. But for you and I, we're still pretty young. We're still in our 30s. But our oldest investments are, in fact, approaching two decades old, closer to two decades old than they are one decade old. And it's already worked absolute wonders for us. So we're just fine and comfortable being ridiculed for talking about this radically moderate mindset. Rage against the FOMO, but don't ignore it either. Because quality businesses in tech and in software have to, to a certain extent, embrace that mindset. Got to get comfortable with that fact.
That's a wrap on this episode of Chipstock Investor. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. We have another great episode coming to you later this week about the company Cerebrus and how chips are stacked on one another, how NVIDIA is doing it with their new Blackwell system. And then, of course, we have some other companies that are not NVIDIA, such as Broadcom, Digital Ocean, and Pure Storage, all coming up in the next couple of weeks. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And if you're interested in having more of our video notes and Discord access with our community, check out the membership here on YouTube or over on our Kofi page. Check out our Kofi shop. We have lots of video notes and manuals up for grabs over there. Link in the description. See you all again soon at Chipstock Investor.